401 AD. It's now more than 300 years since the inaugural games were held at the Colosseum. Both Rome and the arena have changed. At this point, the Colosseum would have been a somewhat sad reminder of a more glorious earlier age. In a way, this is a reflection of what was happening in Rome's empire itself. This is now a new era of Roman history. Rome is no longer what it was. Rome is in decline. The empire was beset on all sides by barbarian invaders who sensed Rome's weakness. There were Saxons in the north, there were Goths along the Danube frontier, Franks along the Rhine, Persians in the east. Rome was under threat. The once invincible Roman army struggles to hold back the tide of enemies on multiple fronts. In 395 AD, the empire itself is split into two halves, neither centered in Rome. It was simply too big for any one person to handle. So each half of the Roman Empire is ruled by one of the sons of Theodosius, the last man to rule a united Roman Empire. The 16-year-old Arcadius rules from Constantinople in the east, and the 15-year-old Honorius rules from Milan in the west. They are very young, they're very inexperienced, and they are clearly not up to the job. Neither of them ever visits Rome. This means that the city that is the ideological and spiritual heart of the empire is something of a backwater. But one man wants to revive Rome by holding the most lavish games seen in the Colosseum for many years. His name is Symmachus. This is a man who was highly literate, who produced a lot of writing over his lifetime, and so we have a good record of who he was. Through the letters that have survived, which have been uh, collated by his son, Memmius, who was devoted to his father, we get a real window into uh, the life of this man who was desperately trying to preserve ancient Rome. Symmachus is a leader of the Senate, and in the absence of the emperor in Rome, he's one of the most powerful people in the city. Symmachus, in many ways, is a throwback, someone who is bound by tradition. He wants to maintain the old order and the reverence for the old gods. But there's a new god on the rise. By the end of the fourth century CE, we think possibly as many as 50% of the population had become Christian. Even both Roman emperors are now Christian. For Symmachus and his supporters, Hosting games in the arena provides the perfect opportunity to push back at this new religion. Symmachus and people like him would have seen the Colosseum and the games within them as absolutely essential to Roman life, to the greatness of, of, of Rome as a city. The simple idea of staging games was an unsettling one to Christian senators, but it wasn't necessarily something that they absolutely thought could not happen. There's no question that Christian senators would have attended Symmachus' games because more than anything else, this is a huge social event for Rome's elite. And even though some members of Rome's elite remained pagan, others had converted to Christianity, what tied them together far more than faith was the fact that they were members of Rome's elite. But then there's a second unwelcome surprise. His name is Telemachus, a fanatical monk fiercely opposed to Rome's old ways. He is an Eastern ascetic monk, someone who has renounced all worldly pleasure in his search for a Christian God. He comes to Rome from the East, and because of that, looks with terrible eyes upon the things that were happening in the Colosseum. He's a man who wants to see that worldview come to an end. <laughs> He's the um, exact opposite of a Roman pleasure seeker. In the name of the one true God! He was on a collision course with the powers that be in Rome, and his beliefs are at complete odds with pagan beliefs. In the name of the one true God! What is he doing? As far as he's concerned, what's happening in the amphitheater had to be stopped. Stop him! He 
He wants to end these games. In the name of our true God, stop! Stop! This is against God's teachings! Take him from here now! Leave! Or face his wrath! What Telemachus did was unprecedented and was shocking. It really was the first time in close to 600 years that anyone had tried to stop a gladiatorial fight. At any event where there's going to be bloodshed, the crowd has an expectation of violence the bloodshed pulled the crowd in and kind of enraptured them. The people of Rome were always capable of exploding into violence. The crowd became so outraged at having its entertainment interrupted that they threw stones at Telemachus. So to have a Christian monk come in and disrupt the game, it's like stepping right into the cultural fault line that's dividing people right at the heart of Rome. If Simicus was trying to revive the traditional values of Rome, then it's a complete failure. Roman society had moved on. Word of Telemachus's death in the Colosseum reaches the emperor in Milan. Horrified by the violence, he orders a total ban on gladiatorial combat throughout the empire. Things were never going to be the same. Nobody was ever going to spend the amount of money that Symmachus did. Nobody was ever going to go back in time and make Rome the center of the universe again. 